just turned onto the track here at Calabogie in this very bone stock Fiat 500. So what I'm trying to do here is get a sense of how the Fiat 500 drives and feels and, and just gets around Calabogie before I try it on Multimatic Simulator. On the track, the Fiat 500 does have a lot of body but it's handling it pretty well. It's pretty good. Cool. Cool. Wow, that's fun. Now we find ourselves at the Multimatic Technical Center in Markham, Ontario. Now that I understand the basics of how the 500 feels to drive in the real world, it's time to take a trip to the virtual one. Now I'm still driving a Fiat 500, but it's a little different than the one you've seen me drive so far in this film. You see, it's not real, it's entirely virtual, and it's fully rendered in Multimatic's VI Drive Sim Dynamic Simulator. So it's time to see what this one drives like compared to the real one I drove at Calabogie. It feels strange to jump into this thing. It's so sophisticated that it feels like a bit of aerospace technology rather than anything to do with cars. So why do this? Why spend hundreds of thousands and perhaps millions of dollars on a driving simulator? The essence of it is, is that um, we, can't, um, we can't relate in a computer um, to what the driver is really feeling, uh, the human is, is really interpreting as uh, the response of the, of the vehicle. Uh, the driver in the loop allows us to bring the, the human into that and basically experience all of the um, events that are going on and interpret those events um, in, a, in a far more efficient manner. Uh, in, in the racing world, the amount of track time has been restricted immensely. Um, one way of cutting costs is to cut track time, um, but you, in, in the end you really need to understand or cull through certain setup changes and the simulator is allowing the racing teams to cull through some big setup changes to sort of hone in on the, the most important parameters to change during a race weekend. The simulator pretty accurately replicates the sensations of the Fiat's body roll and the way it dives under braking. There's one key difference between this virtual 500 and the real one. In the simulator, it seems to have a more aggressive suspension tuning, and in some of the corners, the 500 will spin out easily. That doesn't happen in the real world. After my first session with the virtual 500, I wonder what it took to put all of this together. So what we end up doing then is looking at uh, driver styles in terms of the speed carrying through the corner where each driver might be losing time versus another one because there's always two ways, different ways to get around the track and sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. So um, a really good driver can look at a, somebody else's speed trace and take what they're faster at and keep it and see what the other driver is faster at and learn from that and, and become faster. So we look at things like throttle position, uh, what gear they're in, the steering wheel angle, how they're the brake and the throttle, how they're coming back on the throttle and just how they're handling the the grip that's available. Multimatic's Driver and Loop Simulator is the most sophisticated simulator I've ever driven. As a racing driver, I can see how it works from a motorsport standpoint, but from an auto manufacturer standpoint, I can see how they're going to be able to use this to make cars better in a number of different ways. There's so much data available through the system that manufacturers can analyze that, break it down, and essentially build better cars.